Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. This week, we have a great question from Andy Edwards. I've seen some great shots where the subject is in focus, but the background is out of focus. I think this is called depth of focus. How do you do that? Well, that's a great question, Andy, and you're on the right track. The proper term is actually depth of field, and the specific look you're talking about is called shallow depth of field. Up on the big screen, I have a few examples of shallow depth of field, and they all have the same thing in common. And that is that the subject is clearly in focus, and the background is, well, out of focus. And that's what shallow depth of field is. It's when you selectively focus on one thing in the image and let the rest of the image go out of focus. Let's take a look at how this works. Here I am taking a few shots of my model, Nisha. When I focus on Nisha, I can determine how much of the scene is in focus. By using the correct combination of settings, I can keep things in front of Nisha and things behind Nisha out of focus. This is called shallow depth of field. But I can also keep everything in focus, from the very first object in the frame to the very last. Again, this depends on using the right combination of settings. Well, that's cool. But what are the correct settings? And what do you have to do to control all of this stuff? Well, fortunately, the answer is pretty simple. There are three things that control depth of field. Aperture, focal length, and distance from subject. Well, let's take a look at these one by one. First, let's look at aperture. To get a shallow depth of field, you need a large aperture opening. Now, don't be confused. When I say large aperture opening, I mean a small aperture value. So an aperture value of 2.8, which is a small number, is actually a large aperture opening. And an aperture value of 1.2 is a huge aperture opening. The point is, the larger the opening, the shallower the depth of field. Now let me illustrate this by showing you a series of photos that I took. In this series, I took the uh, pictures of the same subject from the same location using the same focal length. The only thing I changed was the aperture value. I went from a really small aperture opening to a really large aperture opening. Let's take a look. Well, there's no doubt that aperture values have an impact on depth of field. And many photographers only consider aperture values when they're trying to get shallow depth of field. And that can be a big mistake because your focal length also has a huge impact on depth of field. Let's take a look at that series of photos again. This time, I'm going to be changing my focal length and leaving my aperture values alone. So I'll shoot the same series, zooming in and out, but leaving the aperture value the same and shooting from the same distance from my subject. Let's take a look. And finally, let's talk about distance from subject. Your physical distance from your subject is going to impact your depth of field. The closer you are to your subject, the shallower your depth of field will be. Let's try our experiment one more time. This time, I'm going to leave my aperture value and my focal length alone and just move closer and farther away from my subject. Notice that when I get closer to my subject, my depth of field becomes shallower. And when I move away from my subject, much more of the scene becomes sharp.
It's important to note that using different focal lengths will have an impact on the compression and distortion of your images. So check out episode 7 of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one for a complete explanation of that. I also want to remind you that you can see all of the images that I shot for this episode at the Adorama TV Flickr page. Okay, let's review. There are three things that impact depth of field. Aperture, focal length, and distance from subject. A wide open aperture, a long focal length, and a close proximity to your subject will give you the shallowest depth of field. Now, in a future episode, I'm going to be talking about how to get everything in focus, otherwise known as maximum depth of field. We'll be talking about hyperfocal distances and uh, depth of field charts and things like that, so stay tuned for that episode. But now that you know about shallow depth of field, I'd like you to try it out yourself. Go ahead and take a few shots and then post your best to the Adorama TV Flickr page. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Remember, if you have a photography-related question, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.